<laughs> Welcome to the spreadsheets and title maps tutorial. I'm Izzy. I'm Faustine. Yes, just to quickly introduce ourselves for anyone who may not have met us yet. Um, so right now, while we're waiting for everyone to hopefully finish opening Unity, if, please, the Wi-Fi will work, <laughs> um, download the package and import everything. I'll be quickly going over a few terminology um, definitions that we will definitely be using throughout this tutorial, just in case anyone here isn't an artist and may not use these terms regularly. Um, yes, okay, so the first thing, obviously one of the main topics we're going over is what a sprite is. Um, so sprite is a 2D graphic used for character, props, projectiles, anything in any sort of 2D gameplay in which art needs to be made is considered a sprite. Um, so everything from background to UI elements um, to, like I said, characters, as we can see as an example on the screen here. And then another term we will definitely be using throughout today's tutorial is the term sprite sheet. Basically, it's an image that consists of several smaller images, aka sprites, which I mentioned earlier, um, that basically show different um, views of the character. For example, if you were to say animate the character or in the next slide, tile sets, which is another example of a sprite sheet, which is commonly used to create backgrounds in an easy way where you can basically copy paste a bunch of elements to create this background instead of having to draw each background um, by hand every single time. Um, so yeah, so like this slide says, tiles can be used um, in a grid-like pattern. So why use spreadsheets? Love this slide so much. Okay, <laughs> um, basically they definitely optimize the art pipeline of game development. Um, for one, they use less files to deal with both on the art side and the programming side, and they are smaller overall. Um, Faustine, if you wanna mention draw calls. Yeah, so this basically also speeds up the drawing process for um, how the engine just shows images onto your screen. Um, so, because every time when um, Unity displays something onto your screen, it needs to know like what type of file um, it needs, what like part of the file it needs to display and where it needs to display it on screen. And if you use a sprite sheet, um, oh, you're just here. <laughs> if, you need a, uh, if you use a sprite sheet, uh, it takes, um, it's easier for um, the system to communicate with Unity um, or else you'll need a lot of draw calls to draw like say a, a walk cycle um, and with a spreadsheet it can be using the same um like file <laughs> yeah i mean if you're definitely interested in reading more about draw calls i believe faustine you linked a couple articles in the slides which we'll be releasing at the end of this tutorial right um so within the art world there are mainly two different categories that we deal with um, one is pixel art and one is raster art. Um, so pixel art will be made with very tiny colored squares, um, aka pixels, as the name suggests, um, which are usually in very low resolutions. So eight by eight, 16 by six, 32 by 32, et cetera. Um, but as you'll see later, when we mean pixels, we mean very crisp pixels and not like super low res images in which everything is like blurry, but also sort of pixelated. But We'll show an image later to make it clear what I mean by crisp pixels. Um, and then the other type of art that we'll be talking about today is raster art. Um, raster art is also made of tiny squares, but because it is in such high resolution, you won't be able to really see these squares unless you zoom in really closely to whatever art piece or image you're looking at. Um, but I believe today the assets we provided will just be pixel sprites and tile maps. And you may have also heard of vector art, which is made from like geometric shapes and lines. Um, and it's actually um, more different from pixel and raster from each other. Um, Cause it's it's like the goal of that is to maintain its resolution no matter what, like how much you zoom into it. Um, but we don't typically use that in Unity. You can, but it's like, you need like a, a package to render and things like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so mainly you will be working with pixel and raster art. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if you're interested in vector art, um, you can definitely find more in places that talk about merch design because that is mostly where vector art will be used. Let's see, so next slide. Okay, so yes, this is just a 
example of the difference between pixel and raster art. So pixel will be on your right side here, and then raster art will be on your left side, I believe, unless mm -hmm. I mixed up my right and left. In that case, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so okay, I did mention this. So here's the example I was talking about of what we mean by pixel art. So on the left is an example of what we want, obviously, and then on the right, it's pixelated, but it's not exactly what we want because it's very low res in terms of like being able to distinguish certain elements mm. of the picture from one another. Whereas on the left, all the pixels are very crisp, as you can like clearly see the squares and edges of each shape. It's kind of like a style of art if you think about it like that. Um, like they're technically kind of the same thing, but um, visually it's very clearly that they're different. Um, so this is, they're both low resolution images, but this is like blurry and that's crispy pixel art, which is what we want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I definitely will say um, in game dev, art is definitely about intention. So if what you want is on the right, no one's gonna stop you, you know? Like if it's something that adds to whatever game you're trying to develop, go for it. Um, there are no rules in art, so yeah. Okay, so scaling and dimensions. So for most of the games we make here at Studio, it will be on either PC windows. And so the screen size that we most commonly use will be 1920 by 1080. So most of the artists will hopefully draw within the dimensions of 1920 by 1080. But say for example, you're to draw this character that you see on the left. You probably are not gonna use this character in say a platformer and want to draw it to fill up the whole 1920 by 1080 screen. Otherwise, you're not gonna know what you're platforming on. Um, so when you draw, you definitely want to create canvases that are relative to the screen size that you're using. So here we put some examples of sizes relative to, I believe the size of this slide should be 1920 by 1080 as well. So yeah, these are good references. Yeah, um, and 1920 by 1080 is like 16 by nine and it's like ratio. So like if you draw anything that's like in that ratio, it can be scaled up and down to fill the entire screen. Um, so in say like if you're making pixel art and you want it to like, you don't want something like your character that's like 64 by 64, if you want it to like show up at all, <laughs> you would probably want to draw it on a smaller canvas so that it's like relatively like big on the entire game. Um, so like. Some commonly used like canvases for pixel art, um, we have them listed here, like 320 by 10, 180, 480 by 270, and 640 by 360, based on like how like, I don't know, pixelated you want it to look. Um, and yeah, as, as you mentioned, you want to scale art relative to each other. Um, like if you start with your character, you would probably um, draw, make a canvas where like the character can show up like substantially um, and draw like the environment based on where the character is, um, how big the character is and things like that. So, yeah. I will say as a side note though, if you're planning on using raster art in your game, definitely be careful in creating art that you plan on downsizing later, just because with raster art, um, as you compress things, you start losing resolution. And um, mm -hmm. if you remember the images that we showed you in like just the slide be before, I believe, you'll definitely start getting this blurry effect, which may or may not be what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even with raster art, like scaling it up and down, um, you have to like keep that in mind as well while you're making your game. Yeah. yeah, so one good tip for this actually is definitely to collaborate with whoever's on the programming side of things and seeing how your art shows up in Unity um, is a very good practice in terms of the art pipeline. Um, because otherwise, <laughs> if you're creating art this whole time and then you only end up seeing your art product in the final stage and it doesn't end up looking how you want it to look, then that's when things start to get complicated and trying to change things. Yeah. Yeah. So plan, plan it out. Yeah. Important things. Okay. I think we can switch back to the Unity. Unity. Yes. Right. Hopefully, everyone has been able to open Unity and download the package. Oops. Oops. Okay. Yes. So, um, I guess we can sort of do the next step, which is like super simple while we're waiting. Um, so, if everyone can click on the players folder. We have this white square, which Festine amazingly made last night. <laughs> yes, the square. Our cute little child, the square. Um, this will be our player, which we'll be using in reference um, for creating today's platformer level. So if you can drag this square over to wherever your hierarchy sidebar is, 
Um, I know not everyone may necessarily have the same layout for Unity, but yes, there is this hierarchy sidebar. And then just click and drag and drop it down here below the main camera. Yeah. And if you want your scene to like your Unity to look exactly like mine, you can go to window layouts and then I think default. Yeah. And then you'll be looking at the same thing. Yeah, I I will be in this here. Yeah, so we'll mostly be working in this scene section, but if you want, you can definitely try separating this game tab, which should have been right here next to scene, over. And this is oops. Um, this is what will show up in game. Um, if I can, okay. Right now it's like really jank. Okay. No, it's okay. We'll leave it like this. Actually, no, it should be 1920 by 1080. Yes. I forgot about that. Yes. Okay. Full HD. Yeah. yeah. If you want to keep your game window um, like the same dimensions as we mentioned earlier, 1920 by 1080, you can do full HD here or like 16 by 9. Um, yeah. Yeah. And basically, the purpose of having your game window open is to see how everything, when you place it in the scene, looks in what it would look like in the actual game. So it's like when you're drawing, sometimes, depending on what program you have, there's this additional like small square window that will show like the whole canvas while you maybe like zoomed in on like one part of the canvas. So it makes it easier for you to see how additional changes to the canvas will be reflected in total. Yes, question? Yeah, so. I'm gonna go back to default. Yeah, so, okay. So I think you most likely will be in like default layout right now. Um, if you want to show the game, it's actually on like a different tab. You just kind of drag it out over here. Yeah, and then after that, you can set it to um, 1920 by 1080 so that it stays at like this kind of, like ratio slash dimension. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. Um, any other questions before we maybe move on? Okay, window of opportunity, window of opportunity. <laughs> okay, testing. Okay, all right. So now that we have our project open and everything set up um, and with your character kind of in here vibing, um, you can open the sprites folder, which is like, if you go to assets here, um, it would be like the third folder. Um, and while making your actual game and things like that, when an artist gives you a file, you would probably drop it into your um, game like this as well. It would just like show up in a certain folder and it'll be like a PNG or a JPEG or things like that. Um, and so when you import a an image into Unity, it has some default import settings here. Um, but this is not like ideal for pixel art, especially. Um, if you're doing raster art, this might be okay, but you might also have to edit it for it to show up well in your scene. Um, so right now, if you don't change that, um, and you drag this um, image into the hierarchy, so I just basically did that, um, you kind of can't see it at all. <laughs> like it's it's not there. Like if you zoom in, that's what you have. Like this is what it looks like in the scene. <laughs> it's so tiny, um, but that it may be cute, but it's like not the intention <laughs> of the artist. Um, so what you need to do is, you navigate to the image that you have, and then you have to change its beautiful settings. Um, so there are a couple of things that you need to change. Um, and if you don't remember, we also have it in the slides for a later reference. Um, so the first thing that you need to know is the pixels per unit. So in Unity, um, things are rendered based on Unity units. Um, and it's just like a measurement. <laughs> and right now it's treating this image as if um, each um, <laughs> unit would show like 100 pixels of the of the image. Um, that's a little bit convoluted. Um, but what you need to know is that if you have a small image and you want it to show up like large, you have to turn down the pixels per unit. And for pixel art, typically, as we mentioned, it would be like 16 by 16, 32 by 32, or 64 by 64. And it depends on how your artist um, made the art. Um, and for this specific sprite sheet here, um, the pixels per unit is 16. So you set it to that. Um, let me know if that was clear. <laughs> yeah. um, so, yes. so how do we know what how much one unit is? Uh, I guess one unit. One unit. Um, um, 
yeah, I guess. Do you want to answer your own question? <laughs> <laughs> so you see how in the scene there's like a grid there? Mm -hmm. Essentially that every one space on that grid is one unit and mm -hmm. currently the reference to the player, the square I'm assuming is one unit by one unit. We can is it? I don't remember actually. It's it probably start if you just if you just did the default white square. Unit. Yeah, we can like reset it. And then so the like, grid that's like around. Oh yeah. You can like put it in a yeah, single square. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take all your things, but like mm -hmm. the camera, you can basically set how far away it's looking at the grid. So one unit can like it's not one unit's not gonna change, but like the amount of units in the camera can change depending on if you zoom the camera. Yeah. So it's Unity true. will always render things based on the units. But you can like move basically to reiterate what Austin said closer to zoom. Um like you can zoom the camera in and out so that it shows different numbers of unity units. Um, so um, like the way that we're showing here is that we're changing the pixels per unit of the sprite sheet for it to show up like as intended. But another way that you could do this is also set the main camera so that's like zoomed in onto the sprites. Um, but I like to do it this way because you kind of don't have to mess with the main camera. Um, so yeah, so you do 16 here and then you would click apply um, so that it is set. And another thing that you need to do is, um, like we mentioned earlier, like when we put it in here, let's like zoom onto this so we know like <laughs> what we started with. Um, so this is how it looks like now. And it's very blurry as well. Um, this is because there is like, it's using a bilinear filter mode. Um, let me also drag this one in here so we know. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, like after we changed it to 16 by 16, it's figured out. It is now rendering 16 pixels per unit. Um, and okay, we can look at this while we make the settings. So right now it's very blurry, and this is because of the filter mode that is being applied onto it. So if you change it to point, and then also like the compression to none, um, you apply, and it'll look clear. It's crispy now, like we mentioned. <laughs> it's crispy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me show you again. So let's do that with um, the coins that we had here. Um, so right now it looks like that. And then if you go back to sprites and then click on coins, like the image, um, you go into filter mode. So that's this one. And then right now it says um, bilinear and you change that to point, no filter, and then also change compression to none. And then you apply and then it's crispy. Oh, that it's is like, so crispy. It's magic. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, so that's how you do it. Um, in addition to that, you can also change the max size, but um, in the past I haven't, and it worked fine. Um, so yeah, so right now you might also notice that we have, oh, are we gonna go into cutting here? Do we wanna go into slicing? I uh, will recommend before we go into it to change all the sprites that we have here. So the coins, the enemy, the objects, platforms, and player to the settings we recommend. So 16 for pixels per unit, point no filter for the filter mode, and for compression, none. Yes. And you get max leeway to change because they're all sketches and you just click on all. Yes. So if you select all, you will be able to um, change them in like a batch like this. Um, oh yeah, so you just press shift, hold shift, and then click on the first image and then click on the last image. And also, like, yeah. Um, yeah, unfortunately not. But you can also <laughs> press control. You can also press control and then click on every one of them. So it's up to you. <laughs> Two options. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. And I will also do that and still like set them all here. Full turn mode point. And then you have crispy pixel art. Um, yeah, and another hack, I don't know, maybe I'll go into this later, <laughs> but in Unity, you can actually save these like import settings into presets, um, but there's like a video in the slideshow if you're interested and we can talk about that later. Um, but yeah, any questions? Mm -hmm. um for the coins okay that's actually um 
it's like the dimensions actually yeah of all like the whole sprite sheet combined yeah. the entire image is really? 67 pixels by 50 pixels like ignore unity setting this is literally the size of the image yeah well, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so if you multiply 16 by 3, and then you add a one pixel to each sprite in between, it'll be that size. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah, definitely so talk more about it um, when we splice the image. <laughs> um, <laughs> because the artist, because um, this is not either of our arts, we took it off. Um, I believe the Unity the Free Asset Asset Store. Store. Yeah. Um, so the artist did do something a little irregular when putting the sprite sheet together, which we'll talk about in the splicing, which I guess we can start now since unless anyone else has questions, questions, Any other window questions? of opportunity. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Izzy, for the visualization. <laughs> okay. And as we mentioned earlier, um, like if you forget how we kind of did it, um, here are some screenshots. Yeah. Um, yeah, some people change max size to larger than 2048 or smaller <laughs> so that it kind of, I'm not super sure what that does, but um, I think if you have a very long sprite sheet and then you have it as 2048, it might um, show up weirdly, but yeah, but most of the time you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now that we're here, we are going to build a level in Unity. Yeah, okay. actually, can you go back to the Unity? Um... Yes. That is a stapler. It's an Easter egg because this stapler showed up in our last Talamaps tutorial last year. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes. So now that we're here, I guess we can talk about sizing. Would you like to yeah. talk about sizing? Um, okay. So right now, as everyone can see, we have a different, a bunch of different variations of the images in the sprite sheet here. So, like, say for example, this is it a cat? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go with cat for now. <laughs> it's a frog. Is it a frog? <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, we're gonna give this character the name Bob. Bob here. Um, it's basically put together in the sprite sheet um, in different um, static actions because once the sheet is put together and laid on top of each other. It'll create this. I believe this is a walking animation. I could be wrong. It's like walking. But <laughs> in order to do that in the first place, we'll need to do something called splice, which is basically cutting up the sprite sheets into um, a grid. So we'll go here to sprite mode in your inspector, and we'll want to go to multiple because we want to end up with multiple sprites in the end. Am I oh, not? Editing I'm editing coins. coins. My bad. <laughs> um, revert. Okay, yes. The coins? Oh, yes. are we naming coins as well? Any Which suggestions? I'm bad at names, as you can tell. I literally named this character Bob. <laughs> this is fine. But yes, Bob. <laughs> uh, okay, so multiple and then PG. click apply. And then we'll go to Sprite Editor. It's gone, but don't worry. Okay, everyone can see this here. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Which will open up this new window. Calm. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? Oh no, I said calm. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, I can have a Did Bob disappear for all of you guys after change? Was everyone able to open the sprite editor window? Yeah. Oh, question? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, so after you select multiple for sprite mode, you can either click apply. Or you can just directly click the Sprite Editor button right here, if you're able to find it. It's like under generate physics shape and then above the vans. <laughs> yes. 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 Note, select the PNG, um, not the thing that we have in the hierarchy. Which is called a game object. <laughs> good. good. Okay. Um, yes. So there will be three different ways to splice a sprite sheet like this. One will be automatic. And basically, what automatic does is Unity will detect where the furthest edges of your sprite is 
and slice it in that way. So, okay, wait, yes, it's already on ready. No, slice, okay. So if you can see here, um, it goes to like the farthest pixel of this character and slices it in that way. But um, actually, yeah, as you can see here, um, all the slices are not equally done for each character because the character is sometimes a little lower, a little higher, et cetera, than the other characters. But what we want actually is to have an equal, an equally sized grid or box around every character. Yeah. I think the main issue with like slicing it this way is that um, your resulting like slice will have a different pivot. Um, okay. So as you can see, there's like a little blue dot here. <laughs> and if you put it in the game scene and apply like animations on it and the blue dot is at a different like area, um, the character might like Start around <laughs> accidentally floating <laughs> yeah. instead of walking like yeah. you want it to walk. And that is not the intention. So we want to make sure that its pivot is kind of at an area where you intend it to be. Um, so that's why we will not do automatic. Okay, so there's, okay, I believe we're going with cell phones right yeah. for this one. Okay, we so that's a show cell count. Yeah, we'll just yeah. cell count first. Um, okay, so the second one that I'll go over right now, because it's not the one we'll be using today, um, is grid by cell count. And basically with cell count, um, if it's easy for you in your sprite sheet to basically count the number of squares mm -hmm. by columns and rows, um, Unity will automatically calculate how to most evenly separate these boxes. So here you can tell it's two by four. But if we try it here in Unity, um, okay, so columns is four, rows is two, and slice. Unfortunately, you can sort of see that there will be overlaps in the slice, the slicing boxes that are created, which is also not what we want because we want them to be evenly sliced among all the boxes, but also not overlapping. So what we will do here is go to the third option, which is grid by cell size. If it'll click, yes. You'll see if you know. See, I'm so used to the trackpad. Sorry, guys, I'm not a mouse user. Even though we literally told everyone, bring a fucking mouse. My bad, excuse my French. <laughs> no, it's OK. Well, I'm not using my MacBook, so I'm just using Fox YouTube either. I just forgot the mouse existed, but thank you. <laughs> um, yes, so here we'll be manually inputting how large we want each box to be. So like we explained earlier, the pixel per unit size for this character will be 16 by 16. Um, so this is what we'll put for pixel size. And you can sort of see the red outline of how the boxes will show up before you click slice right here. And this is also not what we want. Because as you can see to the very right, um, poor Bob here is going to be slightly sliced off. Like his body will be sliced off. No. Um, and that is because what the artist did in this sprite sheet in particular was added something called padding. Um, padding is basically, I guess the best way is to show you. One here. Oh no, it didn't work. <laughs> Bestie, I'm struggling. Is it just one? No. Yeah, it's one. Hmm. But it's X and Y one, right? Yeah. Let's see where it does. Huh. I guess we didn't test on this one. <laughs> Did we not test on this one? Yeah. It should be 16 by 16. Okay, guys are struggling, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It should be 16 by yeah. 16 just and padding by one. one. Just click splice then. Yeah, I only sliced three of them, but they're evenly sliced. <laughs> one is, but it just didn't slice all of them. Um, the rest just aren't good enough. Aren't good enough. Are you going to get? <laughs> the three that are sliced is basically your idle cycle. You're not going to walk at all. You're idle there. <laughs> You're just going to be bouncing. Bouncing, yeah. That's what smart does. Smart. Oh, but smart is basically, yeah. So um, I guess like there's something weird with this one. Uh, and unfortunately, <laughs> jank is part of the game development process. <laughs> so we can like apply that. Um, but we have tried it with um, the coins we'll and the player. So we're going to do this again. Um, I'm going to show it to you guys. We're going to change it to multiple 
apply, and then Sprite Editor. Okay. And for this one, hopefully, it will no, not it's, slice. It's, <laughs> it does not slice. Yeah. Out. Wait. This, okay, wait. Why is this not working, though? Delete existing. No, that doesn't work, too, because it's still just <clears throat> these four. No, we literally did this one yesterday. Yeah. You don't understand what's happening. You know what, what is what is showing up for you guys? Oh, this one. Okay. Well, Fasty, I think your computer just. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so okay, are you guys using the same like settings able to slice the entire sheet? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Okay, this is good. Stop. That's good. <laughs> is anyone else having the same problem as, as us? As Where it's like off center. Okay. Oh. Okay. Actually, no. You click it, but the window won't disappear. You'll just have to click off. Okay. I think one reason might be that you didn't set sprite mode to multiple. Have you done that? <laughs> so yeah. Also, um, yeah, you want to continue talking? Okay. Sorry. I'm just yeah. <laughs> so if you look here, you can also see that each sprite is named. Um, you can while you're slicing your sprites, you can actually rename it. Um, it's just in the bottom right corner. Um, there's like a name thing, and then you can rename it to something that you would like. Um, so yeah, and it's working for this. We need to thank Unity when it actually works. Like, thank <laughs> Unity. Thank you, Unity. I don't know. I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to double check that everything has been sliced, if you see this um, sideways triangle button down here by the sprite PNGs and click on it, it'll open up this whole tab list of sprites that are individually spliced. Whereas if you go here, oh. <laughs> actually, no, it's not a good example. Here, yes. This is not sliced, but it's okay. okay. We don't need coins. Yes. Any <laughs> other ones? We don't need coins. Any other questions? Or is there anyone who's still stuck? Okay. Um, yeah, um, please go ahead and slice at least platforms because we'll be using that one specifically for the level designing portion slash workshop of this tutorial. Yes, so do the same thing that we did with the curve on the platform. Yes, it should be 16 by 16, padding one by one. So is padding like a pixel between each cell? Yes. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Um, normally, so normally, though, I will say most artists don't include padding. Um, and just slice it 16 by 16 because the padding has. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a lot of programs that help you just export your spreadsheets directly um, and you don't have to make it yourself. Um, I Maybe really? they're using a program that exports with like a padding or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. But there are programs that just export without padding, which is ideal, I think. <laughs> Padding adds nothing <laughs> except pain. <laughs> yeah. Hello. We're going to continue our slides. So um, we included some extra information in here. So, uh, so remember when we edited the import settings? You can also like have presets of your import settings so that you can um, use it every time you import a new um, spread, a spreadsheet or image in here. Um, you can watch this video for more information. It just helps speed up the workflow a little bit. Yeah. It's only not like necessary to know, but it helps. Yeah. I guess questions, if you guys have more questions. Um, Window of opportunity. <laughs> okay. We are not gonna be covering animation today. Animations will actually be the next, next tutorial week. next week. Yes. yes. Okay. Just because, that is a lot to digest, especially if it's your first time. Am I talking about ten minutes? Or you talking about that? Or maybe I don't. I can talk about ten minutes because we did this. Before. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, so has everyone? Does anyone have issues with slicing the platform image right now? Yeah. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you want to try closing Unity? And <laughs> this is the solution I'm offering. <laughs> <laughs> this is the solution I'm offering. Just exit out of everything. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so now we're going to talk about tile maps. So tile maps are basically this um, way of speeding up the workflow of making a level in your game. Um, I don't know if you guys have played just a lot of platformers like Mario, um, Celeste, yeah. Um, a lot of these like pixel-based um, platformers use tile maps. Um, 
And it's just like arranging different images in a grid so that they connect together when you like put them in whatever formation you want it to be. Um, and it just helps like generate things from this single like image we have here. Um, so let's like start making a tile palette together. So Unity has its own like tile map system. Um, so let's start with, um, okay. So let's start with making a tile map within the scene. So if you go to the hierarchy here on the left um, or wherever it is in your scene, um, you can go to um, 2D object and then tile map. And then we're gonna do rectangular because we're doing squares. <laughs> Square, a square is a rectangle. <laughs> yes. And now you have more squares on the screen. <laughs> um, amazing. And if you, um, yeah, this is this grid and tile map is where we will be painting our tiles onto. Um, and so if you go to window, I believe. Yeah, window. And then 2D, 2D tile palette. Um, we're going to make a tile palette. Um, think like paint palette, but for tiles. Where it's like your palette, but then you take tiles from it and then you it's paint like, with that tile. Because you have these tile <laughs> assets, your tile palette will be where you're quote unquote color dropping. If you're an artist, you'll understand that. Color dropping the tiles and then you'll be painting on the tile map, which will be in scene. Yeah, so the tile map is our like canvas and then the platforms are the colors that we're gonna be um, color dropping. So once you have a tile palette, um open um as like another like run through you go to window 2d and then tile palette um and you have your platform sliced so when you click on the arrow here it shows different like little boxes um you can drag this tile set directly into your tile palette actually no you don't you have to <laughs> <laughs> click on the drop down here and then you create a new palette you can name it something we're test we'll name it d no it's a smiley face smiley I don't maybe the call might be a problem. Oh, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um, let's save it into you can save it into whatever folder you want it to be as long as it's under assets. Um, so I'll do sprites. Um, but yeah, so now you have a like a tile palette and you just drag your platforms in here. And oh my gosh, there's a little box here. And if you release, it will also ask you to save release them. The release the box. Um I'll call them tiles. Oh, that's not tiles. It's telling me the folder to select. Okay. Okay. Um, and this will show up. How many of you guys were able to successfully get to this step? Okay. I got the other any question questions? Like, anyone need help? Yeah. Any questions or support? Yes. Help? yes. Okay. No worries. We can do that, show that real quick. So go to window um, 2D. And then tile palette, and then you'll open this window. Um, and if you click on the drop down over here, it's next to edit, and then you can create a new palette there, and you can name it whatever you want, and then save it in a folder. Um, and then you just go into sprites here, and then you drag the platforms into the palette like this. And then when you release the square, it will ask you to save again. Just save again, and then you'll see this. Um, do you also want the explanation for how to create a tile map? Yes. Yeah. Um, so. Anyone else want help or have questions? Window of opportunity? Steal what? This? Stealing it for what though? <laughs> it's copyrighted. It's copyrighted by me. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I see that. Um, okay. So now that we have our tile palette created, we can start painting, like we mentioned earlier. Actually, do you want to explain um, all of this is? Oh yeah. So we're gonna start painting, and then we have a variety of tools at our disposal. So we first of all have this, which is I think it's just like a click and drag thing. Um, it's a select tool, um, and then we have a move tool, which you can like just move things with. And oh, you have to edit. Um, sorry. But okay, well, this is mostly helpful if you're in here. Yeah, you're in here. Yeah. So maybe just do paint first. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, but yeah, so these are different tools. This is the move tool. This is the brush tool. And then this is like a square tool. Like if you 
fill it, you'll make a square. And we'll, then this we'll is demo like a little dropper. bit later, so it makes more sense. Yeah, eyedropper, erase, and then fill. Okay, and we'll show you how to use each of them. Um, so also, as a side note, if you want to edit this tile palette you have here already, you can use the same tools, but just select edit here. It's like a little small button. Um, and you can edit with the same brushes and things like that. But, but definitely be careful if you click edit and then delete something, bad things will happen. Bad <laughs> things will happen. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's gonna be pink. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna actually paint on the scene. So if you click here, this active brush button, and then select a tile that you want to paint. Or I believe if you just select any tile, the paintbrush, will also automatically be selected as well. Yes. And and you have selected your grid and your tile map. You can start painting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we are creating ground. <laughs> That's so true, Bestie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that was the brush. Um, and then you can also use this, um, this like square build box tool. And then you can literally just like make a box. Oh my gosh. It's very useful if you're trying to fill in large areas um, and very quickly. Yeah. And you can also like say you draw like a little boundary here. You can also use the fill bucket. And it tries to understand what you're trying to fill. And you can also use the eyedropper, so it can select whatever you want to yes. um, draw. <laughs> but yeah. Basically, sort of imagine that these tiles are like custom brushes and whatever regular art program you may be using. <laughs> exactly. I hate that lesson to your. Like every tile. You write a script that's like every time you load a level, every ground is 99% of solid. Solid. <laughs> like you can trust it, but not exactly. <laughs> yeah. My friend told me once that this guy was using something before he did, he really didn't like the company. So he changed their definition of true to be true 99.9% of the time. Oh no. <laughs> and then, Chaos. I believe. Okay, do you want to just put one random floating one? Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe not that one. <laughs> Maybe the China one? Yeah. To show the screen. Yeah. If you press the left brackets button, I believe, you can change um, the position in space of whatever tile <laughs> tile you're using. Yes. Tile. Yes. Tile yes. is the word. Um, the left square bracket. Yeah. It's left and right both. Oh, left and right yeah. both. Right? Think of Never them. mind. Any square bracket key. Yes. It's like an arrow, but like one. Yeah, um, <laughs> so for this, it definitely helps you, or at least the artist, not have to draw as many sprites in different directions. Yes. What is like the white rectangle? The white rectangle? That is a player that we... I mean, like the white like, outline. Oh, the white oh, outline? Like... Oh, no, like when you hover over. Oh, OK, this area? That's the camera. Um, so if you zoom out in the game scene, you notice that it's like, yeah. It's like this, are you, are you talking about this camera, like line here? Yeah, yeah it's the camera. Yeah. And it can move with the player if you set it to be that way. Yeah, so as this, the small white box that's filled in moves, this white outline box will move with it. Yeah, but that is with a script. If you do not tie a script to the camera, it will just stay where you put it. That's true. But yes. you tried one, right? Yes, I did. You can make it a child and a player, and then you don't even need to write a script for it. Something as simple did as you write script for it? That's a hack, and I did not do that. <laughs> but yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, um, I mean, there's like this other thing that you can talk about, which is color. Okay. But basically, that's like tinting it. Yeah. So um, now that you guys have, we'll talk about like collisions. Do you want to talk about collisions stuff? Okay. Um, yeah. And you should okay demonstrate the. <laughs> okay, so are you guys kind of semi ready? You tried out the tile maps and things like that. Yeah. Okay, anyone ha need help with it? Okay, we can like show you what it looks like right now when you press play. Um, the player's just gonna fall through. <laughs> the player falls through. <laughs> um, basically, this happens is because you don't have something called colliders set up, which allow your player 
Yes. I remember when July your player to out. actually sit on whatever platform or level that you created. So, okay. Oh, that's how that. We are not moving here. <laughs> um, yeah. And do you guys know about like Unity's like game objects and then component system? Anyone need like a little bit of like a like a crash course? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to? Oh, I can get the crash okay. course. <laughs> um, so in Unity, um, everything that you see in the game or even not see is in this hierarchy is a game object. And then the thing it does, like the reason why it acts the way it does depends on the components it has here um, that you will be able to see in the inspector. So if you wanted to act a certain way, you can just add a component here and then add the type of component you want it to have. And then if you make your own scripts and like C sharp and things like that, you can also add it as a component like this. Scripts are also just components. So if, does that is that clear? Um, that was very guys, crash course level. Yeah, it's but, very crash course. But um, we probably explained it more in the level. Add a component to all similar tiles. Similar tiles? Can you elaborate what you mean? Like, how do you like how do we add a component not to each tile individually? I'm sure there's an easy way, and you're probably yeah. Like, yeah Isn't it just tile? Maybe I just have to go and listen. Okay. Um. <laughs> actually, no. so we're actually um not going to cover that in detail. But if you're interested in having, I keep clicking on the wrong window, but if you click, are interested in tiles that have like special properties, um, you can learn about the prefab brush. Um, so, cause like usually tiles, they're just like ground that you're walking on. But if you want like tiles that act differently, you can have a prefab brush or an easier way that you can also do is just have two tile maps yeah. on top of each other with like different tiles that act differently. Um, so it depends on your needs. Yeah. I um, usually do that latter one just cause it's easier. So put two tiles on top of each other, and then you just paint on one of them. Like one is yeah. visuals, and the other is like uh, hit boxes, yes. sliders. Okay. Uh, actually, well, actually, they're gonna talk about this. Are you gonna do tile sliders? Yeah. yeah. Um, only vaguely though. We're not gonna get into detail. Well, so yeah, but yeah. Um, but you guys can go ahead and help. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna just jump straight into creating the collider for this tile map. So if you can go over to hierarchy and select tile map and then go over to your inspector to the right and go all the way to the bottom and click add component. We're gonna first add the tile map collider 2D. Yes. Okay, I think we can show this first. This first? Okay. Yeah. Were you guys able to find that? And it okay, awesome. Um, so if you look here um, in the scene, like every single tile is highlighted with like a green box. Unless you're colorblind. With a and box. trust us when we say it's it green. Is green. <laughs> but if um, so, the green box is like where the player will hit and not go through. So that's a collider. Um, and then since you have like this many tiles and that many green boxes, it's actually a lot like of computation going on that you don't need because like the player probably will not go like, in like the middle. Go into the middle area. Yeah. And if you play it, um, you will also see that the player now like collide. Right, it won't go through because of the collider, but because of um the fact that it's like a bunch of different like the floaty, <laughs> <laughs> the floaty jump. Sorry about the <laughs> very jank. Um, oh my gosh, it also sticks because of the physics material. But <laughs> it's actually going pretty smooth. Oh, okay. So as you guys can see, um, we're moving the player, but I'm still pressing the right key, and it's not moving anymore. This is um. Thankfully, not a problem with my script. Um, it's uh, it's it's an issue with the tile map. So if you have this many like um, like colliders close together like this, um, as you can see, like sometimes the player gets stuck in it. Um, so the way to resolve this um, is okay. is you can again? explain. We'll be adding <laughs> another component in the inspector. Um, let's see, do I remember? Um, which will be called Composite Collider Two D. Um, and basically, by adding the composite collider 2D, you'll also be adding something called the rigid body 2D. And we will not be messing. Oh, actually, no, I lied. So here in rigid body 2D, we want to make the body type static. Otherwise, if you press play and your and your body type in rigid body 2D was dynamic, this whole tile map that you just created will fall through. Yes. Unless you want that to happen. <laughs> 
Maybe you do. <laughs> um, okay. And then we'll also be going back to Tile Map Collider 2D and check marking used by composite. And then if you go back into scene, you'll see this green outline will no longer be around every single individual tile that you put in, but instead this whole mass. Yeah. So once you have your clutter done, we've basically reached the end of the tutorial portion of this tutorial slash workshop. Um, so now for the rest of the time, I definitely suggest playing around with the tile maps that we gave you and trying to build your own level yeah. and seeing how that works out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also as an addition to the tile map, um, like collider setup, um, so one of our officers, Yoon, added that um, um, they run into some issues with composite collider 2Ds sometimes. Um, and a way to resolve the um, issue with the player being stuck in the tile map collider is to use a pill collider instead of a box collider on the player, um, or a capsule collider, I believe. Um, a capsule collider 2D. Um, but it's a circle here. So. But um, sometimes I like add a like physics material on it and it will roll. But oh yeah. Oh, wait, this is always um, you can also like remember to freeze your screen. Yeah. Well we don't have anything rolling in this so yeah. But yeah if they use a capsule collider it's something you have to like fix the freeze the rotation. Oh yeah this is like this is um, right. Also, as an incentive, if you guys plan on attending next week's workshop, which is the animation workshop, I believe we will try to be using any levels that you make in today's tutorial and next week's tutorial when you'll be animating the sprites that either we gave you or they might be using new sprites next week. Undecided. Yes. And if you want to use the sprites that you sliced earlier into the scene, um, you can go into pro the sprites folder and then like drag a player sprite into your sprite render and it'll be a player. Oh my God. <laughs> and there you have it. Yes. Can I make this full screen? Yes. <laughs> It doesn't flip though. I didn't implement that. <laughs> it's okay. Like all Okay. Before you know, like a game jam, basically good enough. <laughs> Let's try it with a capsule collider because I am. I am in yeah. So you guys can. Um, if you want to personalize this, like this further, you can like change the tile map um, assets, um, change the player assets, and things like that. And this is like just the basics of like any like two D platformer. Um, oh yeah, and if you want to like try other assets that people have made, you can also go to Window and then Asset Store, um, and then it'll give you a link to the Unity Asset Store. Oh, Microsoft Paint. That's true. You can DIY. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and as some additional notes that we mentioned earlier, um, they, there are some extra materials that I linked in this uh, slideshow about presets um, that which will, if you are making a, an entirely like pixel art game, you would probably want all of your sprite sheets to be imported a certain way, and you can use the import settings to change that. Um, if you want rule tiles, it's really cool. It automatically tiles for you. Um, so I can play it and show you guys like what it looks like. Um, so yeah, these are pretty cool. They're pretty neat. Um, as long as you're not changing it on runtime, it does not affect performance as I remember, but like you don't have to worry about performance. Yeah. You can like detect the tiles next to it and then it will like automatically make it. Okay. So rule tiles are cool. I recommend. Um, and then, oops, you can also check out animated tiles. So if you want like a waterfall in your game, you can also make it like flow. You know? um, so, so yeah, you can make it like 
make a tile move <laughs> with animated tiles. And as we mentioned earlier, you can also have prefab brushes. So say you have like a coin that people can collect, um, you can use the prefab brush to like paint it into the scene. Um, not maybe if you're interested in theme, there's also, also 3D, but um, let me find where it is. Yeah, so like you can literally paint it onto the scene and then it's like a coin that you can pull. So yeah, so these are some things that we didn't cover today, but you're like free to explore on your own. They're all like um, with this like base down. Um, it's like a pretty like manageable like um, exploration. So share your work. Oh, there's also something in the chat. Oh yes, um, and our amazing um, ghost of Richard, our friendly ghost in the server, <laughs> and also um, has said that um, note that rule tiles and animated tiles that we showed here require an uh, a tile maps extras package. Um, you just like download it from the packages, um, Unity packages. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, what else? No, that'll be it. That's it. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll open up the floor to any outstanding questions, either related to the specific tutorial, related to Creative Track in general, maybe Intern Apps if you're interested in that, and maybe anything, maybe anything else studio related as well. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. We'll be here for the next 25 minutes. Um, if you guys want to continue building your own level, um, either ask questions, you can come up to us up here or just raise your hand out there. Um, or feel free to leave if you have to go. Yes. Yes, question? This is actually really nice. Okay, yeah, use a capsule collider if you want to climb slopes better. <laughs> um, but that's it for today. <laughs>